Hello and welcome to this history class with Ado Lebatam Job. Today we shall be discussing part 5 of the topic, the common word OAU, AU, ECOWAS, UNO and OPEC. And our theme is History and Global Issues. By the end of this lesson, it is expected that you should be able to examine the aims and objectives of the OPEC, state the achievements of the OPEC, discuss the failures and problems of the OPEC, and lastly, explain how the OPEC meets the foreign policy objective of Nigeria. OPEC simply means Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Oil production is being undertaken by companies, and these companies are called multinational companies because they are owned by two or more countries. There are several examples of multinational companies. Some of them are the British Petroleum, Shell, Exxon, and Mobi. These companies, or multinational companies, were those that were in charge of oil production, and they were controlling the prices of oil in the international oil market. Multinational oil companies were the ones in charge of oil exploration and sale of oil in the international market up to the 1960s. The prices that were quoted on the international oil market were different from the ones these companies paid to the oil producing countries. For instance, in 1950, the price of oil per barrel was $1.80, but these companies were paying the producing countries $0.60 per barrel. They made a huge gain of about $1.20 per barrel. So some countries were not happy with this development. At a point in time, they came together and decided to form an organization that would be in charge of controlling oil prices on the international oil market. This was how OPEC was formed. And OPEC simply means Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Some countries were fascinated or attracted to this development and decided to join OPEC. One of such countries that joined OPEC was Nigeria. And Nigeria has since played an active role in the organization and has also benefited from the sales of oil according to the terms set by OPEC. Now let's look at the formation of OPEC. OPEC as an organization, of course, is an intergovernmental organization because the government of the countries that made up OPEC came together on September 14, 1960, in the country called Iraq, at the capital called Baghdad. They assembled and were discussing on this issue of multinational oil companies controlling the prices of oil. They decided and agreed that they will form an organization that will now control the sale and prices of oil. This meeting was attended by five countries and they became the founding members of OPEC. The countries were Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Venezuela. After this, several countries were attracted to joining OPEC because of the role they were playing in the international oil market. And so membership was open to oil exporting countries. Other countries that later joined OPEC were Qatar, 1961, Indonesia, 1962, Libya, 1962, the United Arab Emirates 1967 and Algeria in 1969. Others were Nigeria in 1971, Ecuador in 1973, Gabon in 1975, Angola in 2007, Equatorial Guinea in 2017 and recently Congo in 2018. However, Indonesia suspended her membership from the organization that took place on 30th November 2016. Again, Qatar has also terminated her membership of the organization, and that took place in January 2019. So, Qatar is the only oil producing country that has joined OPEC and has finally withdrawn from the organization. It is important to note that there are other oil producing countries that are not members of OPEC. Some of them are the United States of America and Russia. As you can see in the picture that is displayed on the screen, OPEC membership countries is shown in blue. These are the countries that are members of OPEC. Furthermore, the headquarters of OPEC is located in Austria, and that is in Vienna. And as you can see the building that is shown on the screen, that is the headquarters of OPEC. Now let's consider the aims and objectives 
of OPEC as an organization. Every organization has an aim or an objective for which it was formed to achieve. According to Article 2 of the Statute of OPEC, which was released in the year 2012, OPEC was established to achieve some certain objectives. These objectives include to coordinate and unify petroleum policies of member states, to ensure stability in prices in the international oil market, to secure steady income to oil producing countries. Also, it was established to ensure efficient economic and regular supply of petroleum to consuming nations. And lastly, to provide a fair return on capital to those investing in the petroleum industry. These were the aims and objectives for which OPEC was established to achieve. Now let's look at the organs of OPEC. What are the organs? Because without the organs, these objectives cannot be achieved. These organs are the Conference, the Board of Governors, and the Secretariat. These are the three main organs of OPEC. Now let's consider them one after the other. The first one is the Conference. The Conference is the highest and most powerful organ of the organization. The Conference is headed by a president of the Conference. Member states are represented in the Conference through their petroleum ministers and the meeting of the Conference is held twice in a year. There are some functions that are performed by the Conference. These functions are formulation of the policy of the organization, admission of new members, appointment of the Secretary General, and lastly, approval of the budget. Now let's look at the Board of Governors. The Board of Governors is another important organ of OPEC. This is the body or organ that handles the administration of OPEC. The Board of Governors has representatives from member states and these representatives are referred to as governors. That is why the organ is called Board of Governors. They are entitled to serve a two-year term. The Board of Governors also carry out some important functions to the organizations. Some of these functions are preparation of the agenda for the meeting of the conference, they also prepare the budget, and lastly, management of the affairs of the organization. These are all performed by the organ called the Board of Governors. Lastly, let's look at the Secretariat. The Secretariat of OPEC is located in Vienna, Austria. We have earlier noted that. The Secretariat is headed by the Secretary General. The Secretary General of OPEC is appointed by the conference and serves a three-year term. The secretary is further divided into four departments. You have the information department, the economic department, the administrative department, and lastly, the technical department. All of these organs have played important role that led to the success of OPEC. So now let's consider the achievement of OPEC as an organization. OPEC has made some achievements over the years. It was formed in the year 1960, and we are now in 2019. Some of the notable achievements of OPEC include provision of a common fund, which is known as OPEC Fund for International Development. This fund has been made available to member states who are suffering from several or various financial constraints. This fund has been made available by OPEC to developing nations, and as of January 2010, over 120 developing nations have benefited from this fund to the tune of $11,682,000. Another area where OPEC has also recorded achievement is in the area of regulation of production and price of oil. OPEC since its foundation has been able to do this through what was known as the quota system. And what was the quota system? OPEC normally allocates to member states the quota of oil to be produced. Member states are advised not to exceed that quota in order not to supply excess oil on the international oil market. In this way, OPEC was able to regulate or control the price. This was an important achievement of OPEC. Despite these achievements, OPEC still has some failures. And so let's consider the failures of OPEC. OPEC has failed in several areas. Some of the areas where OPEC has failed include Failure to stabilize oil prices. Oil prices on the international oil market has been fluctuating, that is going up and down. Over the years, OPEC has not been able to come out with a policy that will enhance the stability of oil prices. Another area where OPEC has failed 
is failure to discipline member states. OPEC normally gives out directives on the quantity of oil to be produced by each member state. This is known as the quota system. Sometimes member states produce more than the quota that was allocated to them in order to make more gains and OPEC has not been able to punish the defaulting member states. This has led other member states to also default or produce more than the production quotas that was allocated to them by OPEC. So failure to discipline member states has been a major failure of OPEC as an organization. Now let's look at the problems. Apart from these failures, OPEC still faces some problems. These problems are many, but some of them include disloyalty by member states, oil storage, an alternative source of energy. Let's take them one after the other. Disloyalty by member states. Member states are not loyal to the organization. They were supposed to abide by the rules and regulations and directives given by OPEC. For instance, these directives on the quota production system. Members normally exceed and that shows disloyalty. It shows disrespect to the organization. Let's look at oil storage. Oil storage is a process whereby some countries will purchase a large quantity of oil and stock it. This has been affecting OPEC because it normally affects the price. Those countries may not be interested in buying at a particular point because they have stock excess of the product. At some particular point, these countries that normally buy the product because they have stock excess quantity of it may not be interested in buying it and it affects the prices of oil, leading to a fall in prices. Lastly, let's look at the problem of alternative source of energy. The world today is looking at alternative source of energy that is getting energy from different sources other than depending on the petroleum products. You have nuclear energy and you also have the solar energy. As you can see in the images displayed on the screen, you can see the sunlight and the solar panel being displayed. These are source of energy too. You can also see the nuclear energy being generated from those tanks. These are alternative source of energy that the world is looking onto. It is affecting OPEC because it has drastically reduced the consumption of oil and its products. Have a look at the problems of OPEC. Now let's consider how OPEC meets the foreign policy objectives of Nigeria. OPEC since its foundation has been there to protect the interests of member states. Through OPEC, Nigeria has been able to make some huge profits from oil production and has used that to develop our economy and pursue our foreign policy objectives. According to OPEC's annual statistical bulletin, in 2016, Nigeria produced a total of 1.43 million barrels per day of petroleum. This is a huge sum of money and was injected into the economy and also used to pursue other foreign policy objectives of Nigeria. Having a look at how OPEC meets Nigerian foreign policy objective, let's now consider Nigeria's role in OPEC. Since joining OPEC in the year 1971, Nigeria has played leadership role to the organization called OPEC. Nigeria has thus accepted the appointments of our citizens into leadership position in the organization. For instance, as of 2019, the current Secretary General of the organization is a Nigerian and his name is Muhammad Sanusi Barakindo. He's a Nigerian and is the current Secretary General of OPEC as of 2019. Furthermore, Nigeria has also played financial roles in OPEC. Nigeria has been prompt in a payment of dues and levies to the organization. So leadership and financial roles are the most important roles that Nigeria has played to the organization. The roles played by Nigeria and other member states of OPEC has assisted the organization, especially in achieving her objectives. Now we have come to the end of our discussion. Let's take a quick look at what we have done so far. We learned that OPEC means Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Also, we learned that OPEC was established on the 14th of September 1960 at Baghdad in Iraq. Furthermore, we learned that some aims and objectives of the organization were to coordinate and unify petroleum policies of member states, to provide a fair return on capital to those investing in the petroleum industry. Moving on, we also looked at the organs of OPEC and we discussed that OPEC has three organs, namely the conference, 
the Board of Governors and the Secretariat. Also, we discussed some achievements of OPEC and discovered that OPEC has recorded some achievements which include provision of a common fund and regulation of oil production and price. We also looked at some problems faced by OPEC and we discovered that disobedience from member states and discovery of alternative source of energy were some of the problems facing OPEC. We also learned that OPEC has failed to stabilize price of oil and discipline member states. Also, we learned that OPEC has met Nigeria's foreign policy objectives by providing a platform which allows Nigeria to benefit from our investment in oil. Lastly, we discussed that Nigeria has played an active role in OPEC, especially through leadership and financial support. Now let's take some questions to test our knowledge on what we have learned so far. Question 1. How did OPEC meet Nigeria's foreign policy objective? A. Enhancing income from oil. B. Condemnation of colonialism. Or C. Having common currency. The correct answer is A. Enhancing income from oil. Question 2. Which of the following is not an achievement of the OPEC? A. Provision of a common fund. B. Settlement of disputes or C. Regulation of oil price The answer is B. Settlement of disputes Now, we have looked at part 5, OPEC, in the topic The common word, OAU, AU, ECOWAS, UNO, and OPEC I want to believe you can now examine the aims and objectives of OPEC state the achievements of OPEC and lastly, explain how OPEC meets the foreign policy objective of Nigeria. Thank you and bye for now.